you have a Mr. Heater or a Mr. Buddy Heater? And are you thinking about getting one? Today, I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to hook your Mr. Heater up to a 20 pound propane tank. This is super easy to do and will save you a ton of money, a ton of money. It'll also allow you to burn this thing for days not hours with one of these things. For those of you that are watching this that already know how to do this or just watching to support the channel, I've got a pro tip at the end for you too. Sensible tips to help you out, coming right up. If you're brand new here at our channel, welcome to our community where we give you emergency preparedness how-tos like this prepping tips, and news that affects you weekly. If you think you'd find value in that, be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Let's jump into this one. So maybe you're just a camper or you wanna hook this thing up in the garage to stay warm. Maybe you're a prepper, maybe you're a beginner prepper. And maybe some of you guys have a Mr. Heater for emergency power outages. Whatever the reason, we're gonna go over how to hook this thing up to a 20 pound tank to save you guys a ton of money. And what type of tank to get? What type of hose to get? Do you need a filter on your line? Do you need a regulator? Okay, so what are you gonna need? There's lots of different hoses. You're gonna need one of these hoses. Sometimes it comes with this little gripper on there. Do you need the gripper? Not necessarily. And if you're wondering what hose this is, I'm gonna leave Amazon links down below for the filter, the hoses, all of the Mr. Buddy heaters. Now, as much as I recommend shopping local, I know some of you don't have that opportunity and you have to shop online. Nonetheless, you can use those links to research the product. Same with the filter, super important to have a filter and we'll go over why. And you're probably wondering, well, what about the regulator? We'll go over that too. But more than anything, I want you guys to know that this is very easy to do. Anyone can do this. But for liability reasons, I'm gonna tell you that this is for illustrations only. Do not try this at home. Follow the instructions and talk to a professional. And of course, you'll need a Mr. Heater. This happens to be the Mr. Buddy. You can use whatever Mr. Heater, portable heater you want. And if you don't know how to choose, we have a great video on that and I'll put it at the end screen and also down in the description below. Now, if we're talking about a Mr. Buddy heater, you're gonna look over here on this side and right down here is a cheat sheet and part numbers of hoses and accessories that work with this particular heater. When it comes to a big buddy heater, it'll be right here or on the inside of this panel. So rest assured, if you don't know what hose to get, just look at your unit and it'll have a description for you. Also, let me add, this one right back here is the quick connect adapter. It'll have a part number for that as well. The other one will go to this assembly right here. And that'll be on the big buddy heater and the flex. But if you're using a little buddy heater, it's just gonna be that one hose. So this part is super easy. These green canisters will screw right on. You'll, you'll hear a little as it pops onto there. And then these will just swivel down and then there's a little magnet that'll hold it in place. That's done and you're ready to use the controls. If you don't know how to work the controls, be sure to check out that other video. I go over each and every one and how they work in case you're super newbie and that's a little bit intimidating. Now, a lot of people ask, but don't you need a regulator? Do you need a hose with a regulator? No, that's what this guy is right here. This right here is the regulator for this unit. You can see it up there. It actually even looks like a regulator because it is. This right here is the fuel filter. You wanna put it on first onto the Mr. Buddy or the Mr. Heater. A lot of times it'll come brand new with this little rubber sleeve over this because you don't wanna damage that. Remove that. A lot of people ask, do you need a filter? You don't need a filter, but if you're gonna be using this thing long-term, this thing does a couple things. It prevents contaminants going into your Mr. Heater and more popular, it prevents the liquid from going into your Mr. Heater, which then makes it very difficult to start and causes problems. How much is it? Well, you can get it on Amazon for around 13 bucks, I think is the going price right now. You watch our channel regularly. I showed you guys when this thing went on sale at Costco for a screaming deal and it came with this and the hose for 59 bucks, which was crazy. Another good reason to hit that notification bell because I will let you guys know about good information like that. So this part is super easy. Just be careful around this little nipple and you wanna go twist this on, make sure you don't cross thread it or anything because a lot of times these things are made out of cheap nickel and whatever, but this will just thread on nice and smooth. If it's not screwing on smooth, then back it off. That's another trick that people do is they'll spin it backwards to make sure that they're seated in there really nice and well, and then they start to spin. And it should go smooth with very little effort, and then you wanna give it just a hand, hand snugness. That's it, you're done. The next thing you're gonna do is take this end right here, and just for an example, you guys can see that liquid in the hose. The hose is not gonna restrict the liquid. This filter will restrict the liquid. So same story, careful on the nipple. You're gonna to wanna to go backwards a little bit, 
Make sure this lines up nice. If it's a struggle, you might be cross threading it back off start again, but you're gonna wanna get this thing nice and fist tight. If you happen to hear gas down here for whatever reason, just take a pair of pliers and give it a quarter turn. But generally speaking, I can do all this by my hand tightening and it's just fine. Okay, so the next step, you take the other end of the hose, which looks like this, or a lot of times it'll look like this one. If you buy a brand new hose, it will typically come with a hand gripper on here. Make sure this is turned off. Now, if you're using this one for this end, you're gonna wanna put it up here and remember, this one turns left. If you turn right, you're gonna be spinning forever. You're not gonna know what's going on. This one will spin left to go in there. And remember, it's really easy to get these things tight with those little grippers on it. You only need to do it fist tight. If you don't have any strength at all, you might get a pair of pliers. This happens to be the one that I recommended for Costco. This style is a right-handed turn. So you'll turn it on right hand, nice and snug with your fist. Then you're gonna turn this guy on to the left all the way open. Now these tanks, a lot of grocery stores sell them, Walmart sells them. You can go to a lot of gas stations and pick up these 20 pound tanks. And the nice thing is, is that you can refill these things for a fraction of the price of buying these one pound cylinders. And like I said, this thing on a 20 pound tank is gonna burn for what it seems like ever compared to those little one pounders. One pounders will burn for hours. Like we're talking like three to six hours a lot of times. These 20 pound tanks will burn for days. I know some of you are still timid about this because you worry about gas leaks. I've got a little at home trick for that that shouldn't cost you a dime. So you're gonna take a water bottle, go to your kitchen, grab your Dawn dish soap. You're gonna give it just a tiny little squeeze in there. We're talking like less than a teaspoon. Then you're gonna put about an inch and a half of water in that thing. Then you're gonna take the bottle and you're gonna shake it up vigorously. See how it foams up real quick, just like that. Then you're gonna make sure that this is opened up all the way. Now this is a trick that I've known a while. We use this for finding holes and in inflatables. A lot of gas guys know this trick. You just squeeze this, grab some of those bubbles like that, smear it all around, smear it around your fittings, down just like that. If there's a leak, this is gonna bubble really, really fast. And you're gonna know, see, there's no bubbles, there's no growing bubbles at all, that means you're good to go. Now we used all of our bubbles. Well, we do the same thing again. Lid on, shake it back up. We're full of bubbles again. Squeeze some out. Same thing up here. Just cover it. If you guys don't see any bubbles happening, you don't have any leaks. Now there's some fancy stuff that you can buy that does the same thing, but this is the cheap person DIY at home version. And like I said, this trick works really good for finding holes in air mattresses, blow up tubes, floaties for the pool or the water. Once you're secure with knowing that there's no leaks, just grab a paper towel, dry all of this off best you can. Next thing you're gonna do is swing this over to pile it. Push it down and hold it. Now what we're doing here is we're getting all of the air out of that line. The longer the line, the longer it'll take. But you gotta remember that tiny little hole at the end of the nipple, it's gotta push all of the air out and get that liquid propane up here. Now on the instructions, it'll say 30 seconds. What you'll wanna do is give it a try every 30 seconds. So now this one was warmed up and it started on the money. Then you might have to push this down just a little bit to slide it over to low. They got a little bit of a locking mechanism in each setting. So you just got to push it down, push it down just a tiny bit, and then it pivots over and locks into that position. See, it won't go anywhere. Down, slide over, and then it locks into that little position. Now, one of the things I hear is a lot of complaints 
on how long it takes. Some people, it will take quite a while to get that hose primed. It depends on your unit. I think that some units, maybe the older ones that didn't have a filter or were built a little bit different, take a little bit longer. When you Now, when you start this and it's, it's the first time, it's cold, you just got all the air out of the line, you're gonna wanna hold this down after it lights for about a good 30 seconds think to get everything heated up before you release it. If it goes out, do it all over again and continue to hold it down a little bit longer because things aren't heated up yet. Then drop it down a little bit, pivot it over to low. If you guys are struggling with it and it just won't light, then take back your unit and switch it for another one. These newer units I have, I've never had a problem. Usually the first time of priming it for about 30 seconds, it works immediately. But I also have another heater that's just like this Mr. Heater made by Dynaglow, and I have to sit there and pump that thing up to 15 times to get that one started. But maybe you're the person that bought one of these and it's just sitting in the box. I highly urge you to go mess around with it, get used to it, get familiar with it, because you gotta remember with mechanics, mechanics can fail. And sometimes you can get a bad one right out of the box. Meaning if you bought it for an emergency, for an emergency power outage, and you go to try it that first time when you finally need it with that power outage and you find out that you got a dud, well, you're gonna be wishing that you'd been messing around with that earlier. So don't forget that soapy suds is a really good way just to check all of your connections. The other way that you can check it is with your nose. It's gonna smell really foul. The smell of the gas smells a lot like rotten eggs. If you got a good sniffer, you're gonna be able to smell it. And that's two different ways to make sure that you don't have a leak. There you guys go. You've successfully hooked up a 20 pound tank to your Mr. Heater. And you were smart and got the filter on there too. Now, before we get to my pro tip, I just hope that this hooking up a Mr. Heater to a 20 pound tank reached those of you that wrote in down at the comments to do a video on this. Be sure to let me know if that reached you. And also for any of the pros out there, please let me know any of your comments. Please share this out so it gets to some of these people that are a little bit timid about something like this. A lot of folks that aren't like me out here in the country are new to this type of stuff. And if they're trying to get ready for emergency preparedness, they're buying this blind and they lack that natural know-how when it comes to this camping stuff and they also lack the confidence. So a little visual how-to really helps them out. Okay, so I got a couple pro tips. As cool as this 20 pound tank is, it is a lug to cart around. So unless this thing is super stationary, in which it usually isn't for me, I'm usually taking it somewhere, I'm taking it to a fishing blind, a hunting blind, I'm taking it to this part of the barn or over to this part of the barn kitchen, or if I need to work on the broken snow blower, I can bring this thing right over to where I'm at. Having one of these smaller propane tanks not only gives you the longer burn time, but it's a lot easier to carry around with the Mr. Heater. As you can see, it's practically smaller than the Mr. Buddy Heater. This thing doesn't weigh quite as much as a full 20 pound tank. So whether you wanna be really mobile with this longer burn time and saving money, or maybe you're older and you just don't wanna be carting around a big 20 pound tank, they're not easy to carry around for someone that doesn't have a lot of strength. These smaller tanks like this gives you the best of both worlds. Like I've been burning this thing on and off for over a month. The downside is those things tend to be kind of pricey. So if you're a yard seller or someone goes on marketplace and looks for good deals, keep your eye out for those smaller propane tanks. They're like gold. So the next tip, you may have seen it or you may not have, is advanced tips and tricks with a Mr. Buddy here in this video right up here. And also eventually down here in this corner will be a video on how you can refill these things at home. The benefit of that, it makes this thing even more portable. And you don't have to worry about the cost because you're refilling these with a 20 pound tank at home. So you're not paying the astronomical prices at the store for these things, but you're still getting the size advantage, portability advantage. Remember, I got this video right up here in case you don't know which one to pick and they're in there. I've got all of these items down below in the description below for you guys to check out. And I hope this reached those of you out there that wanted to see this done. Thanks for watching guys. Keep prepping, keep learning, keep doing. We'll see you on the next one.